So today I want to talk about temperature in painting. If you've ever looked at your painting and thought, it looks a little bit off or something doesn't look right, but I can't figure out what it is, it's possible that you had a temperature problem. But don't fret, there are some ways to fix your temperature. Basically, every color has a spectrum of shades. So if we talk about the color blue, there's obviously warmer shades of blue and then there's cooler shades of blue. If you think about the color orange, there's really orangey oranges and then there's like cooler, bluer oranges. So there's a spectrum of shades. So when you're painting, it's really important that you kind of notice the temperature. Should this be a cool blue or a warm blue? Should I have a cool red or a really orangey red in this situation? So you always want to be asking yourself, you know, what's the right shade? What's the right temperature in this part of my painting? And sometimes we'll complete a painting and then at the end we'll kind of notice that the ratio of warms to cools is off. So we need to fix it. And to do this, we want to change the temperature. This is also sometimes called retuning your painting. Now, sometimes our paintings look off because of something else, like the values are incorrect, or the composition is weird, or our proportions are out of whack. So obviously you want to rule out those things first before you change the temperature. But if everything else looks good, it's just your warms to cools, then you would obviously go and change the temperature. So we're gonna talk about two methods today that you can use to update your temperature. These methods work really well for like a dry painting or a dry section of your painting. So if your painting is still wet, you just wanna let it dry first and then you can go in and easily update the temperature after that. The two methods that we'll discuss are scumbling and glazing and both of these work super well to just slightly make edits to your painting after it's dry without the viewer noticing that you actually you know change anything. They're very subtle and they blend into your dry painting so that no one really knows that you you know had to go in and change things. It's kind of like a little hack which I really like. So I just want to show you a couple examples of paintings that I have that I did a while ago but there's something a little bit off and parts of the painting need a temperature update. Sometimes your whole painting will need a temperature update, sometimes just a single portion of your painting. And so for these, it's just a single part of the painting. So I have this painting here. It's kind of like a semi-abstract sidewalk outdoor painting. It's a, a view that I, I was walking on the sidewalk and it was just a beautiful day and I want it to be a little bit abstract. The problem is this sidewalk here needs to be a lot warmer and this needs to be a lot cooler and this needs to be cooler. So a way that you can kind of figure out if you need to update your temperature and, and which way, like warm or cool, is to take a picture of your painting and then use like a filter. I like to use the warm and cool uh, setting, like when you're editing a photo, and you kind of move it to warm and move it to cool and see how your painting photo looks warm and cool. And if you notice that when you make it cooler, it looks a lot better, then maybe you need to make your painting a little bit cooler. If you notice the warm looks better or certain parts of the painting, like the warm sticks out, maybe that part of your painting needs to be warmer. So with this painting, I took a picture of it and I noticed that this part uh, looked really good cool, these parts, and this part looks good warm. You know, that's how I knew that it was gonna match better. And also if you know a little bit of color theory about like the sun and shadows, that'll kind of help too and I knew that that this should be warm, this side should be cool because of where the sun was coming, so that helps as well. But I really like just playing around with photos, you know? And then I also have this painting. It was a beach bonfire. And the only part of the painting I feel off about is this bottom like blue area. It's the fire pit um, stone. It needs to be a bit warmer and that's because like this fire is casting a lot of warm shadows and also my feet here are you know a little bit warm as well. And this is just too cool. So I took a picture and played around and the warm setting looked so much better. Just that part of the painting. Everywhere else in the painting I thought looked pretty balanced. So it's just that part that we're going to update and make it a little bit warmer. Okay, so before we get into the painting demonstration, these principles will apply to any type of paint. So I'm focusing on oil painting today, that's what I'll show in my demo, but you can change the temperature of your art with any type of paint. If you're using acrylic, you can dilute your paint with water or a medium and have a really thin layer, and that's essentially the same thing as glazing. If you're a watercolor painter, you can do a really thin, watery layer on top to kind of change the temperature. Same principles, it's just the materials and mediums.
mediums will be a bit different. So let's get into the painting. Okay, so we will start with scumbling first. I have some burnt sienna and titanium white here. The sidewalk needs to be warm and burnt sienna is very natural looking. And I grabbed a dash of cadmium red as well. After you grab some paint, wipe your brush off on a towel so that there's not much paint on your brush. With scumbling, you're using the side of the brush. So I like to move the brush in circles or side to side with a very light hand. This technique is also called dry brushing. You're not trying to fully cover the area with paint. You're just taking the smallest amount of pigment and rubbing it into the previous dry layer of paint. And it ends up looking natural. So the top layer and the dry layer kind of grind together and it really shouldn't look like you painted over it with like a thick new layer of paint. You want the bottom texture to really shine through. So the top layer should be very, very subtle. So keep your brush dry with very little pigment, use the side of the brush, move slowly, and keep a super light hand while moving your brush in circular motions. And that's scumbling, so it's great to use anytime you want to slightly update or edit a part of your painting, but you want it to also look natural and very subtle. So wait till the surface is dry and then scumble lightly to change the temperature, lighten or darken an area, or to cover up something that you didn't like. It's also great for layering colors and getting an impressionistic look with lots of depth and color dimension. It looks like a bunch of colors are somehow inside of one color when you scumble a lot. Monet did a lot of scumbling and it's a really beautiful effect. And you can see that this warmth really brings out the highlights below it and I just think it looks much better than the cool white that I had there previously. And now we'll do the same thing for the grassy area. I originally had this area a bit brown and dry looking because that's how my photo was that I was painting from. But sometimes we can manipulate our photos, you know, and I realized that some green would brighten up the painting and bring a coolness and vibrance. So I have cadmium green and permanent green light here and we'll do some scumbling motions. And again, you can see the coolness from the green brightens up the blue on the bottom and the dark teal on the left. There's also this fence on the left here, and I also looked at my photo and saw that there were some blue shadows that I didn't paint originally. So I'm just adding some scumbled cerulean blue and a bit of that green so it's tealish. And that warm burnt sienna in the middle just looks so nice in between the cool blues and greens. I just think this looks much better and I'm really happy with it. And because we scumbled, it doesn't really look like we painted over it. It just looks very natural and like it happened on the first go around. <laughs> Okay, so on to glazing. I have a medium sized brush here, but any will really do. I'm grabbing some alizarin crimson because it's a transparent color. With glazing, you want transparent colors if possible. You can find a list online and also the tubes of paint will usually say if it's opaque or transparent. I also have a tiny bit of burnt sienna. You also need a medium of some kind. So I have safflower oil here. So you want a tiny bit of pigment and then mostly medium. Because glazing is what it sounds like. We're creating a glaze and we're going to sweep it over a dried area. Then the glaze will change the temperature, but you really can't see any brush strokes or signs of editing. It's just a very transparent layer that changes the overall color feel without doing a ton of work. It's just a really awesome method for updating the temperature or, you know, changing your painting when you're really not liking how it feels or how the mood is coming off. So I'm just sweeping back and forth with the glaze. You can't really see a lot here on video, but at the end, you will see a big difference between the before and after. With glazing, I especially target the highlight areas, the wider areas, because that's really where the glaze will shine through. All right, so as you can see here with the before and after sidewalk painting, I think the after version just really pops a lot more. The colors and temperatures just look more balanced and in harmony with each other. Same with the beach bonfire painting here. It's super subtle, but the warmth on the bottom part of the painting brings out the fire more, and it really balances all of the blue tones scattered throughout. 
I will just mention that if you really like the, you know, like the monochrome effect of all blues or, you know, all warm colors on a painting, that's totally great. Sometimes I like to do that kind of effect where it's all blue types of shades on a painting. That's like a different vibe than this is more so if you want a little bit more realistic shadows and colors and more balance. You don't need to do this method. This is just if you think it looks a little bit off and you want to update the temperature. Okay, well thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful if you were wanting to learn more about temperature or glazing or scumbling or anything like that. I just hope you enjoyed. So thanks for watching and happy painting.